Do you ever just look at a recipe and go, oh my gosh, that's so many ingredients, I'm out. Well today I have 15 recipes that are only five ingredients to inspire you and help you get dinner on the table faster. My name is Kathy and you can call me your air fryer coach. Today a lot of these recipes are found in my cookbook. You can find it at yummyairfryerecipes.com and I'll also list everything that I can down in the description box below. You ready? Let's go. Bubble pizza is a recipe that's been on my website forever. I'm modifying it to work in the air fryer today. For this one you just need some refrigerated biscuit dough, some pizza sauce, spaghetti sauce will work too, pepperoni or any protein of your choice, mozzarella cheese and a little Italian seasoning. Open up your biscuits, woo, there we go. And using clean scissors, quarter the biscuits. To wrap them in a bowl and add a jar of spaghetti sauce, it's about 14 ounces, and then snip in some pepperoni. You can buy the mini ones or cut these in quarters too. There's not really a big measurement here, just whatever looks good to you. And then throw in however much cheese you want. And then a teaspoon up to a tablespoon of that Italian seasoning. Then you're just gonna stir all of this up together. Now that you've got your mixture, you've got options. You could either put them in ramekins, in some muffin liners, a cake barrel, or any oven safe dish. To help you out, I'm gonna go ahead and cook up these different sizes so you know how long for each. We're gonna start with a temperature of about 330 and we'll start with 10 minutes. 10 minutes later, yum yum. Let's see these little guys, well they're about done. But these bigger ones, well they're pretty darn close. They need just a little more time. So 10 minutes for the little guys and it'll be a total of about 13 to 14 minutes for the big guys, well, medium guys. And for this guy, it's gonna be about 12 to 14 minutes. No matter which option you go with, when you're almost done, top it with some cheese. Then you can just let it sit in a hot air fryer and just rest and melt. Or crank it up to 400 and cook it for one or two more minutes. Oh, yum, yum. How is it, sister? Go. <laughs> Tastes like spaghetti, but it's pizza, right? Yeah. Good stuff. How many stars? Five stars. Yeehaw. You'll see in this video, I use several different models of the Kasori air fryer. And today's video is sponsored by Kasori Dual Blaze Air Fryer. And a lot of you have asked, will all of my recipes still work in the dual blaze? This is a unique air fryer because there's a burner on the top and on the bottom, which basically means you don't have to flip or rotate your food. And yes, indeed, my air fryer recipes will still work in the dual blaze air fryer. Same time, same temp, you just never have to reheat and you never have to flip. Thank you, Kasori, for sponsoring this video. I'm gonna leave a special link down in the video description box below where you can purchase the Kasori dual blaze if you want to, or go to airfryertools.com, I'll link to it there as well. You asked for more shrimp recipes. Here are some shrimp tacos. They are on page 115 in my cookbook. You can find that at yummyairfryerecipes.com. First, you'll need about a pound of shrimp. I went with the small ones that are peeled, the divine, and no tails, just make sure it's raw. And then some tortillas. In the recipe book, we have some seasoning listed out here, but you could keep it super simple and just use taco seasoning. And then whatever toppings you want, I'm going with cheese, I love coleslaw mix, and anything else you love. Thawed out my shrimp, I'm just gonna kinda pat it dry as much as I can. Then just go ahead and put those shrimp in a bowl, and then spray these with a few squirts of oil. Then add in a couple teaspoons of taco seasoning or use the seasoning blend that I have linked down in the video description box below. Just mix that up. Now since shrimp just cooks so quickly, I do want to preheat my air fryer. Okay, it's all nice and hot now. Drop my shrimp right into the air fryer basket. Listen to that sizzle. Spread it out evenly across the bottom of the basket. And we'll go ahead and cook that up. Yeah, 400 for five to six minutes. And check out that deliciousness. Shrimp needs to be cooked to 145 and that was plenty. We are at 170. Whoa, Nelly. Tell me, how do you taco? I like sour cream and of course, some shrimp, a little cheese, coleslaw for the crunch, and cilantro for a pop of flavor. And yes, that was ready in less than 15 minutes. Mm -mm -mm. That is so good. Five stars all the way. 
The five ingredients for this one are some chicken breasts, bacon bits, you can do homemade or bagged, cheddar cheese, some teriyaki sauce, and some ranch. And the first thing I'm gonna do is just marinate this chicken for a little bit. And honestly, I don't have a measurement. I've been making this one for so long. Maybe just like a cup of teriyaki sauce. And I'm gonna throw in some ranch dressing, just enough to coat everything. Now you could do this like with chicken tenders. It kind of looks disgusting, but trust me, it's amazing. Then we'll just let this sit for at least 30 minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and preheat my air fryer to 380 degrees. Okay, air fryer is ready. And because this is gonna be messy, I'm doing my air fryer parchment paper. And yes, you can air fry things that are marinated. Full disclosure here, this chicken is still a slightly frozen. So I know it's gonna take a little bit longer than normal to cook. Okay, so I'm gonna pop this in and I'm gonna start with 380. And I'm gonna do 10 minutes because I wanna add some cheese near the end of cooking. But we'll just do 10 minutes for now. All right, let's take a peek. Internal temp is reading. Yeah, we still need some time. That's still kind of frozen, I can tell. So now I'm gonna just use some silicone tongs and flip these fellas over. And since I'm quite far away from being done, I'm just going to continue to let it cook. And this time I'll do 380 for about seven minutes. And yes, all of this, yep, that is because of snow. Do you want some chicken? Do you want some chicken? Usually my chicken does not take this long. It's 100% due to the fact that I had it partially frozen. Yeah, now it's just right where I want it to be. We are almost there. Now I'm just gonna top it with some cheese and some bacon bits. And optional, if you want to, it is a sixth ingredient, but some green onions add a touch of color and flavor. So pop that back in, and now I'm gonna finish it with about, mm, let's go four minutes, and we'll see how it looks. And here we go. Oh boy, that looks so good. It smells amazing too. And we have hit that 160. So I'm gonna let it rest right here in the air fryer and it's gonna be perfect. And thank you parchment paper for saving me from headache. All right, taste test. Mm -hmm. I'll take the whole thing please. Give me more. It's 100 out of five. I'll do a five out of five. What's your five number? Out of five. Three. All right, enjoy that one. These salmon fajitas are so easy to whip together and they taste amazing. The first thing I'm gonna do is make a foil sling for my salmon and it's just gonna make it a lot easier to lift out of the air fryer. There you go, just fold it to fit right in your basket with little handles. And your five ingredients are your favorite fajita seasoning, your salmon, some onions and peppers, and tortillas. Optional ingredients, lime, cilantro, avocado. And I love using coleslaw mix to add a nice crunch to fajitas. Okay, then go ahead and place your salmon right in the air fryer. Then we're gonna place the peppers and onions all around the salmon, and I've got my avocado oil in here and I'm just gonna spray over all of that and then just sprinkle that fajita seasoning right over the top. I'm gonna massage that seasoning into the salmon a little bit and yeah I'm just using my hands to mix everything around. You can use any peppers you want. We just add mini peppers on hand so that's what we used. Pop it in the air fryer and we're gonna cook at 350 for about eight minutes. Okay, this is done and it looks gorgeous. We're gonna take a quick internal temperature just to make sure it's cooked correctly. And this one is a thicker, so I'm gonna cook it maybe for about three more minutes. Okay, now we'll take a peek and boom, we are at temp, if not more. Okay, then just use your cute little foil sling and lift that right onto a cutting board. Then you can just flake off that salmon. Oh my goodness, it's gonna be amazing. Then it's time to assemble your fajita. And if you want to, squeeze on some lime, throw on some cilantro, some of that coleslaw mixture, and some avocado. Salmon fajita. Mm. Mm. That's a five. You want to try? No. No? I don't like it. Okay, 
non-seafood lovers won't like this one. I'm making five ingredient garlic honey chicken tenders. All you need for this one is some soy sauce, some ketchup, honey and garlic, and a little salt and pepper. Now, because we've got honey, you know I love using my kitchen scale. And we need a third cup of honey. Uh, squeeze that out. That's gonna weigh 110 grams. Okay, then we need a cup of ketchup, which is like 272 grams. And you guys, I just think weighing things out just makes life so much cleaner. And look, so close. <laughs> there we go. Then you need a quarter cup of soy sauce. And then you need two minced garlic cloves or a teaspoon of the jarred stuff. We're gonna just whisk all of that up, mix it together, and holy moly, that already smells good. Okay, I've got the delicious marinade all ready. Now my chicken tenders, they're a little frozen. So I'm gonna kill two birds with one stemmel. Yes, I could cook these from frozen, but since there's honey in this marinade, I think it's gonna do better if I just let these thaw and cook them from thaw mode instead of frozen mode. Now, since these are frozen, it's kind of hard to get them to coat, you know, evenly. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna just put them in a shallow dish and lay them out next to each other just so everybody can get some marinade on them. And I'll just get all that extra marinade right there with the rest of the chicken. And then I'm just gonna make sure every little piece is coated and this is gonna be fantastic. All right, this chicken is so ready to go. I'm just gonna give this a quick little preheat at 380 for five minutes. Air fryer is ready. And since there's honey, that's just gonna be a sticky mess. So I'm gonna use parchment paper. Just make sure your pieces are somewhat even sized. Pop that in the air fryer. And I'm gonna set this at 380. I'm gonna start with 10 minutes and I'm gonna press my shake reminder. There's my little shake reminder. And let's do a quick temperature check because it's never fun to overcook chicken. Okay, they're looking good. I'm gonna give them a quick little flip. If you want to, you could spoon some of this sauce onto the other side of the chicken just since we have it and it'll make it taste nice and flavorful. Let's put that back in. I'm just gonna let that finish up. Wow, those smell so good. Just about to 160. I'm gonna let these rest for five minutes and they'll be perfect. And if you wanna cook your broccoli and chicken at the same time, you just need to add two extra minutes. Three minutes to go. Just gonna bring these chicken to the top now. And we'll just let these finish up. And look at that deliciousness. Okay, and taste test of honey garlic chicken. Mm hmm. That's good. I'd say five out of five. Solid five for me, too. Five stars, five ingredients. That was wimpy. Hey. <laughs> what you think about the chicken? 500 million out of five. Five stars. That tastes fantastic. For these air fryer beef enchiladas, you just need some flour tortillas or any kind you like, some cooked up taco meat, cheese, enchilada sauce, and beans of your choice. So first I'm gonna preheat my air fryer. Okay, the air fryer is ready. I'm just gonna plop my ground beef in there and just kind of spread it out a little bit to help it cook evenly. And anytime I have extra onions, I just bag them up and freeze them. So I'm just gonna throw some here in my meat and let it cook at the same time. Pop it in the air fryer and we're gonna cook it at 380 and we'll start with about four minutes and stir it up. Now, of course, you could cook up this meat on your stove top the traditional way, but there's a super awesome benefit to cooking it up in your air fryer I'm about to show you. All right, pop that out. It's already looking and smelling fantastic. Just stir it around and break the pieces up a little bit more. And now that I'm halfway through cooking, I'm gonna throw some taco seasoning on. This is totally optional, of course. And then just mix that all in there. Now my ground beef was a 93.7 beef. If your meat is a fattier meat, it might be smoking your air fryer a little bit. In that case, you could add just a little water at the bottom of the pan and that should help ease up the smoking. I'm gonna cook this for about another four minutes. And ta-da, ground beef is ready. And here's that magical benefit I told you about. All the grease down at the bottom. This is nice and greasy free. Just to show you how little grease is left on this hamburger meat, I'm dumping it on a paper towel. And let's just press this down and see how much more grease we can absorb. You can see it really is not that much left. 
So awesome. And I just use that same paper towel to wipe up the rest of the little meat and onions. And then if you want, you can let this cool or just wipe it all out right away. And then just toss that in the trash. There, and I just gave that a quick little power wash and it's ready for step number two. All right, start with the flour tortilla, spread out your beans, then get some taco meat and place it right on top of the beans. Then get some cheese, put it right on top. And if you want to, you could drizzle a little enchilada sauce inside. There you go. Then you're gonna roll it up this way. You've got a lot of stuff in your enchilada. It's stuffed. So to help it stick, you could throw a little sour cream here or even a little water. Okay, now you have some options. You could put parchment paper down. If you have a little pan that fits in here, you can do that or just be like my child and stick it right in there. Let's add a few more. Mommy's sons. Mommy's is smaller. Cause you eat less. <laughs> now, if you have them less packed in, then you can flip them over so the seam side is down. Cause this one might come up. Let's see if we can squeeze one more of Mommy's right there. All right, last little guy is gonna fit in there. Then just pour on a little more enchilada sauce and use a spoon to cover up all of the tortillas. Then finish with some cheese. Yes, this will be messy to clean up, but it cooks so much faster than the oven. Pop it in the air fryer, cook at 350, and we're gonna bring it all the way down to five minutes. Time is up and it is Perfect. Top with some fresh tomatoes. So flavorful. Super easy weeknight meal. Mm -hmm. For this one, you just need to pat a pound of meat, some onion, obviously some zucchini, some marinara or spaghetti sauce, and your favorite kind of cheese. But I'm making it even easier. I've got leftover spaghetti sauce. I got my zucchini and my cheese. Okay, so if you don't have spaghetti sauce leftovers like I do, just cook up your ground beef or turkey and add your favorite spaghetti sauce and season it the way you like to. I usually always add onions and garlic and even garlic powder in my spaghetti sauce. Then give that zucchini a good little wash. Cut it in half lengthwise and just scoop out those seeds. Place them in your air fryer. I'm gonna pat them dry just a little bit. Sprinkle on some sea salt and lightly mist with oil. If you have larger zucchinis that are going from your garden, you'll probably have to cut those down and they might take longer to cook. But for this size, I'm gonna go with 380 and at about 10 minutes and we'll add more time as needed. Let's see how they look. Beautiful. We can just check for doneness. Oh, perfect. Just tap that fork in there and it just goes through nicely. I'm just gonna dab up some of the moisture from the zucchini, then spoon in some spaghetti sauce and then just sprinkle on some yummy cheese. I'm using mozzarella. You could use Parmesan or whatever else you love. We're gonna pop this back in the air fryer at 380 for just about two more minutes. Let's take a peek. Oh, look, it's so beautiful. This is such a great low carb option for dinner and for the taste test. Mmm, so good. Oh, he loves it. Oh, good. One time-saving and money-saving tip is to find different spice blends that you love and then mix them up with the meat that you use. And to save money, instead of buying already chopped pork chops, you can just buy a pork loin roast and cut it up yourself. I'm just cutting up some about half inch, three quarter inch slices of meat. And whatever I don't use, I'm just bagging up and popping in the freezer for later. Preheat your air fryer, pat your pork chops dry, then lightly spray with some oil and sprinkle on some spices and massage it in. Flip it around and repeat if desired. Just place these in your air fryer, close it up and cook it at 350 for about 12 minutes. Make sure you got that shake reminder going. All right, time to test it out. I always do like to test the meat when I'm at that halfway point. And that just helps me get a good idea so I don't overcook. And you can see these are really close to that 160. That one I'm gonna pull out because it's gonna rest and finish coming to temp. I'll leave these other three in for just a couple more minutes. We'll let him rest here in some foil. And we'll let these finish up, but I think we can punch that down to three minutes. All right, it's done. Woo! And now we'll temp it again. That one's almost done. This one's completely done. And this one is close enough. This is a good reminder to always use that internal temperature read because thickness does matter when you're cooking up meats. 
give this about two more minutes and it will be ready to go. Now it's done. And you know what? I realized I never flipped these babies, but they still look really great. And while that meat is resting, I love to throw veggies right into the air fryer for a nice well-rounded meal. One more simple and easy dinner idea for you. Mmm, so good. Time to make some delicious sausage wraps. Sausage wraps. And for this one, we just want some chicken sausages, your choice of cheese, white bread, and a little melted butter. Start rolling out your bread to make it nice and mushed and flat. How do you feel about that? Looks disgusting. Place the cheese on the bread. Okay, got the sausage. What are you gonna do next? Place the sausage on the cheese. Then just roll that all around and squish it up. Never fear if they won't shut. We'll just close them with toothpicks. And now just slather it with butter. Butter, butter, need the butter. Butter, 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 butter. Pop those babies in the air fryer. Boom. And then turn this on, go to. Go to 380 for six to eight minutes. There we go. All right, mister. How does it look? Ooh. Melted cheese, yum, yum. And guess what, guess what? Take it off like that. Nice. Crazy, dude. What a hack. How is it? Mmm, 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 mmm. Check that out. Those are good. Just the right amount of crunchy on the outside, perfect cheese on the inside. Do you like them? Yeah. What do you rate it? They're honestly like perfect, honestly. Like, like honestly perfect, honestly. How many stars? Easy five out of five. Ding, ding, ding. This is one of those flexible recipes. Pretty much I'm just gonna use pizza sauce. You could even do spaghetti sauce. Grab some pepperoni, ham, whatever you want. This is what I grabbed and some cheese. Go ahead and spread your dough out on a working surface and press all those little seams together. Then just spread out your pizza sauce. You'll just wanna leave the long edges open here. Oh, and if you want to, you could throw on a little garlic powder and even some Italian seasoning. Then sprinkle on some cheese, about a half cup will do. And lastly, throw down some meat of choice. And then you just roll it up, kind of like a cinnamon roll. And lastly, just kind of press that seam in. You might have to squeeze these together. And then you'll have a cute little log, but we're not done. Cut it into eight cute little pizza snails. And boom, check it out. I am using some parchment paper because you know, me and cheese. And there they are. I really didn't need to spray them with oil just because the crescent rolls already pretty much have lots of goodness in them. And we'll run it at 350 for eight minutes. Now I did turn on my shake reminder, not necessarily because I wanted to flip these, but I just wanted to double check on them and make sure they're cooking good, which they are. So I'm gonna let that finish up. All right, I'm gonna pull these out because I can smell them and they look fantastic. Which one to get? Which one? Mm -hmm. I'd say like a three and a half out of five. Three and a half out of five? You don't like it? No. Mm -hmm. Is it the pepperoni or the Pillsbury biscuit you don't like? I think it's the biscuit. Hey, they're yummy. Okay, thank you. Okay, I have some thawed out shrimp. You can buy fresh or frozen. Just make sure it's thawed because we're gonna make a delicious marinade. Now, one thing to know about shrimp and marinades is that they don't need much time because it's not a tough meat. So you'll never really wanna marinate shrimp for more than an hour. So we'll start with a half cup of melted butter and a whopping teaspoon of paprika, a half teaspoon of onion salt, and a quarter teaspoon of minced garlic, or that'll be about like half a clove. And then just blend up all that little goodness. And I'm just gonna pour that right over the shrimp. And by the way, these are extra large shrimp that I'm using today. And I'm just gonna let this rest for about 15 minutes. Now, because shrimp cooks so quickly, we're gonna go ahead and preheat the air fryer to 370. Okay, it's telling me it's preheated and ready. And it looks like my cold shrimp made my butter harden up. So this will be fun to see what happens. Just drop it in and then spread it out so all the shrimp is evenly layered. Okay, we'll pop it in and I'm just gonna hit that little shrimp preset and we'll rotate that in about three minutes. All right, time to flip these babies. Now that butter is melted and these are turning beautiful and they smell absolutely amazing. All flipped and ready to finish up. 
And here we are less than 30 minutes later and that is ready to go. And here's what's cool, you can just lift that out and you've got more marinade there. You can pour that right over the top if you want. Serve it over rice, mm-mm. And you know what, none of my kids like shrimp. Mm. that's so good. Mm. That is so simple and so yummy. You just need some steak, mushrooms, onions, Worcestershire sauce, and a little garlic powder. So first we're gonna just grab a half of an onion and slice that up and then just chunk it up. So just some big little chunkies. Then drop that in a bowl. And now I've got eight ounces of mushrooms that I washed. And now I'm gonna just chop them into halves. I've got a few kids that don't care for mushrooms, so having them in these big old chunks makes it easy for them to pick it out. Add that to your bowl, and then it's time for some steak. So I just washed my steak. I'm using tri-tip today, but some ribeye or sirloin will work great as well. You just need about a pound. I got almost a pound and a half today. You just wanna get it fairly even sized. Then drop it in with your veggies. Then here's our little marinade. It's a half cup of Worcestershire sauce and a half tablespoon of garlic powder. And then, like I said, as much salt and pepper as you want. Then give it a mix. You can do this in a plastic bag if you want or just in a bowl. I'm just gonna cover this up and then I'm gonna let it marinate in the fridge for about two hours. It's been two hours, the marinade is ready. Because I have steak, I definitely want to preheat my air fryer. Okay, preheated air fryer is ready. Drop your veggies right in there, level that out. Pop it in the air fryer. And we're gonna cook this at 400, but I'm gonna do for about 12 minutes and I'm turning on my shake reminder. We'll see how it goes. Let's take a peek, it smells wonderful. Woo! Give that a stir. And let's take a quick temperature check here. Wow, that is just about done. I'm gonna take a peek at some of these other ones. All right, I'm gonna give it like three more minutes. And then we'll let it rest and it will be done. Okay, it's been three minutes and this looks so delicious. Gonna double check the temperature. Oh, it's beyond well done really probably could get by with just six minutes. It's really gonna depend on how big your steak chunks are. We are gonna eat right out of the air fryer. This boy heard steak and came running. Five ingredients to make this. Easy, it's nice and juicy. It's very good. I'd maybe put a little more salt on it next time. Thumbs up? Mm-hmm, 10 out of 10. Woohoo! Cream mustard salmon is delicious. So my sling is about four inches wide and it's gonna fit the width of the basket and I've got these cute little handles to help me out. And then next you're gonna make your sauce which is simply a tablespoon of Dijon mustard or 15 grams and then two tablespoons of honey which comes to 42 grams. Blend that up and then you wanna save about a tablespoon to drizzle on the top afterwards. Now here are my salmon fillets. I got these from Costco. These are a little bit thicker. Of course, the thicker your salmon, the longer it will take to cook. Go ahead and pat them dry with a paper towel and then I sprinkled on some salt and pepper and just massage that in. And then here is my glaze. I'm just gonna brush it on both sides of the salmon. Eat. Now I'm getting my hands dirty. And then since I still have it on that foil sling, I'm just going to lift it right into the air fryer basket. Just tuck in the sling so the foil doesn't blow up into the fan. And I'm going to put on a little bit more glaze. And then I'm just using my preset button right here for salmon. It's 350 for eight minutes. And there we go. I did not even have to rotate my salmon. It is perfectly done. Use the foil sling to just lift that out of the basket. Easy peasy and so amazing. Get your extra glaze and you can pour that right over the top of salmon. This one is so good. On page 118 in my cookbook, after you de-seed your pepper, go ahead and cut those into one inch pieces. And I'm just gonna use a half of an onion today because I wanna save this for a different meal. The idea is just to get your veggies fairly even in size. And because the potatoes are so cheap, I'm using them as the star of the show. And to save time while cooking, you wanna cut these in nice little bite-sized pieces. That way they will cook faster. And because I'm doing a lot of potatoes, I'm gonna pop those in the air fryer and cook them up a little bit before I add those veggies. And to give a little bit more of a fried effect instead of a baked effect, I'm gonna add that oil. And we'll cook it at 370 for eight minutes and turn on that shake reminder. Give that a quick little stir. 
pop that back in. And while that finishes up, I'm gonna go ahead and cut up these sausages. Just wanna get them bite-sized. These are pre-cooked, so it's really just a matter of heating them up. And now I'm gonna throw in those veggies, spray a little more oil, stir that up, and I'm gonna bump it back to 370 for about six more minutes. That's done. Ooh, that looks so delicious and it smells amazing. Now we'll just add that sausage. And remember, this sausage is pre-cooked, so I'm not really cooking it, I'm just heating it through. And now I'm gonna crank it up to 380 and give it about eight more minutes. Oh yeah, and make sure you've got a shake reminder or something to help you stir it halfway through. At this point, your sausage is probably cooked through. So it's really just gonna depend on how soft you like your potatoes and veggies. By the way, fun fact, this makes amazing leftovers with scrambled eggs the next morning. And check out that goodness. And teenagers, what do they think about this? Mmm. Mmm. Very good. Five stars all the way? Mm, definitely. Definitely. Okay, now I'm just gonna go fold that laundry right there. Yeah. <laughs> hey, this next recipe can totally be modified with any meat or bread of your choice, and it literally is gonna be ready in 15 minutes or less. So this recipe is so flexible. These are artisan rolls that I got from Costco. Any sort of ciabatta roll, anything like that will work. Then, perfect if you have any leftover barbecue or meat. You could also just buy some pre-cooked stuff and then grab some sort of yummy dip. This is gonna be so delicious, and some Parmesan cheese. These ciabatta rolls are just already pre-sliced, and you can use any spinach and artichoke dip that you want. You obviously don't have to get what's at Costco. Go ahead and spread the spinach and artichoke dip right on top of the bread. And here's the cool thing about using like leftover meat or pre-cooked meat. You don't necessarily have to heat it up beforehand. Just spread it on top, and then of course you're gonna have extras. You can individually bag these up and freeze it for another night. Place them right inside the basket. Pop it in the air fryer. Turn it on and we are gonna do 400 for six minutes. And check out how nice and crispy that is. And top it with some Parmesan cheese. We're gonna pop it back in the air fryer. Now if you have the Kasori Dual Blaze, it does have a broil setting. So that's only going to run the top burner. And we're just gonna run it for actually about two more minutes to melt that cheese. Check it out. Serve this with a side salad and you are set. All right, here's Logan and Libby. Wow. You like that? That sauce is so good. So good? You like it, sis? That is good, holy crap. Give me your stars, give me your stars. Easy five. Ding, 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 yahoo. That is seriously delicious dinner in 15 minutes or less. I've got more recipe inspiration right here. These are my budget-friendly air fryer dinners. And make sure you're not making any of these air fryer mistakes. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next video.